Good evening. My name is Che Yu. Tonight, we celebrate the extraordinary talents of our fellow SEC members who are the nominees and the recipients of the Callaway Awards, celebrating excellence in directing and choreography of Broadway, which we're so thrilled to be presenting for the first time since 2020. The Zelda Fitch Chandler Award for the great accomplishments by directors and choreographers for transforming the national arts landscape with a singular creativity and their deep investment in a particular community, this year in the central United States. And the award for lifetime achievement and distinguished service in the not-for-profit theater, the Gordon Davidson Award. Now, let's take a moment to acknowledge we are back in the room our rooms, the rooms that we lead, that we create, the rehearsal rooms, the casting rooms, rooms in which we conceptualize with designers, rooms in which production teams gather to realize our dreams and ideas. It is thrilling to finally be back in the space to once again collaborate with artists to create live theater, to tell and share the stories of our communities, nation, and our humanity. And we're back to honor the incredibly talented artists whose rooms created excellent and profound work for the 2021 and 2022 season. It is my honor to be your host tonight. It is a privilege to recognize these extraordinary members who have raised the artistic threshold, finding innovative ways to tell stories that elevate and inspire our community and leave lasting influences on our audiences and the American theater. Now, I'd like to introduce Mark Brokaw to kick off the celebration. Thank you so much for that introduction, as well as for serving as our host this evening. And on behalf of my fellow trustees of the Stage Directors and Choreographers Foundation, welcome. Though we find ourselves in a virtual ceremony for another year, we're thrilled that this ceremony allows us the access to gather as a community at the same time from all over the country and internationally to celebrate and honor the stellar accomplishments of our members and peers. These recognitions point to the heart of the Foundation's mission, to celebrate, develop, and support professional stage directors and choreographers throughout every phase of their careers, whether that's recognizing our members' exemplary work, honoring their legacies, or promoting emerging talent. Throughout the year, STCF's work has not only continued, but intensified. In addition to the awards being presented tonight and our ongoing public programming, the Lloyd Richards New Futures Residency for BIPOC directors and choreographers is halfway through its second year, and we'll be hearing more from our current resident artist, Kendra Ware, later this evening. We'll also be announcing the awardee of the third Barbara Whitman Award in the spring, which is given annually to a female, trans, or non-binary early career director. Our professional development program, which was on hiatus for two years when the pandemic hit and went through a top to bottom re-examination, is now back in operation, more accessible to all directors and choreographers, and more attuned to how work happens today. And in the past three years, SDCF's Emergency Assistance Fund has provided over $275,000 of financial assistance to both SDC members and SDC associate members. We are deeply grateful to all who have contributed and those who continue to contribute to this fund, as well as donations to all our other programming and work that SDCF offers. Without your help and support, none of the work we do would be possible. So thank you. And now, I'm delighted to introduce Pam Berlin, who's going to present our first award of the evening, the 2022 Joe A. Calloway Award. Thanks, Mark. And hello, everyone. I'm Pam Berlin. I'm a former president of the SDC Executive Board and the current chair of the Calloway Committee. Our intrepid group of nine was tasked with seeing 87 off-Broadway productions for the 2021-22 season. I'd like to acknowledge and thank those committee members. They were Maggie Burrows, Richard Hamburger, Darren Lee, Lori Leshner, Amy Saltz, 
Maria Torres, Christopher Wyndham, and Che Yu. And now I am honored to introduce the 2021-22 Callaway finalists for excellence in direction. Knud Adams is nominated for his original and beautifully nuanced production of English at the Atlantic Theater Company. Uh, Knud was also a Callaway finalist last year for his production of Headlands at LCT3. Congratulations, Knud. Being asked by Sanaz to direct her play English was the honor of my life. We had that special alchemy, which comes when everyone on a production invests with open hearts, goodwill, and curiosity, and our show became a testament to what can come from a special level of design support and imagination for a new play. Thank you to everyone who helped make that process so wonderful, in particular the Iranian women telling their stories so bravely and joyfully this year. And congratulations to everyone making art under difficult circumstances. Thank you. David Cromer is nominated for his exquisite and delicate production of A Case for the Existence of God at the Signature Theater Company. Congratulations, David. Thank you, SDCF, for this great honor for considering me among these wonderful artists. I need to take this opportunity to thank Mandy Greenfield, uh, to thank Paige Evans and the entire staff of the Signature, to the designers Brenda Abandandolo, David Tennant, Arnolfo Maldonado, Chris Darbassi, and Tyler Michelow, and to the really brilliant collaborative staff of The Room, the cast Will Brill and Kyle Beltran, the playwright Sam Hunter, the stage management team of Heather Englander and Katie Young, and the associate director, Sanaz Tennant. Thank you so much. Rebecca Frecknell is nominated for her amazing and breathtakingly staged production of Sanctuary City at New York Theatre Workshop. Congratulations, Rebecca. Thank you so much for recognizing my work on Sanctuary City. It was such a joy to be part of this production and also my first time working in New York and to be recognized um, by my peer group in America is really humbling and thrilling. So thank you so much. Um, I have to thank Martina Mayok, the brilliant uh, playwright who trusted me with this piece, a really personal piece to her. And I know um, I know that those words really came from the heart. And thank you also to my incredible creative team, Isabella, Mikael, and Tom for drawing those words off the page and into the Lortel. Um, I'd also love to thank Jim Nicola, the brilliant um, ex-artistic director of uh, New York Theatre Workshop, who really just brought me into the home of the workshop and the family there. And it was thrilling to be part of his final um, year at, at the workshop as artistic director. So thank you to everyone who helped me make the show. And thank you so much to all of you for recognizing uh, my work on it. I really, I really appreciate it. Thank you. There are two choreographers nominated as finalists for excellence in choreography. Danny Mefford's choreography for Kimberly Akimbo at the Atlantic Theater Company was quirky, fun, and inspired. Congratulations, Danny. Hi everyone, I'm Danny Mefford. I wanna thank you from the bottom of my heart for honoring Kimberly Akimbo and my work in Kimberly Akimbo. Uh, I love the show so much. Uh, it was a great joy to try to live up to the nuance and the power and humor of the writing. So I wanna thank David Lindsay Abair and Janine Tesori for being such incredible writers. Uh, I wanna thank my partner in crime, Jess Stone. I wanna thank the Atlantic Theater for producing the off-Broadway production. Uh, I want to thank the cast and the designers and the crew, especially the team quartet, Fernell, Nina, Olivia, and Michael, and the understudies, Sky, Alex, and Miguel. But I want to congratulate all the Callaway Award winners and my fellow finalists. Um, thank you so much. Sergio Mejia's work on Americano at New World Stages was exciting and full of brio spanning Broadway jazz to traditional Mexican dance styles. Congratulations, Sergio. Buenas tardes. Soy Sergio Mejia y es un orgullo ser nominado por el premio de Joe A. Calloway. 
esta nominación es algo completamente inesperado y no podría estar más feliz de ser parte de una larga lista de destacados, nominados y ganadores de este premio. Americano es la historia de un soñador, una historia de esperanza, amor y perseverancia, todo impulsado por un sueño americano. Un sueño que tuvo Tony Valdevinos cuando se enteró a los 18 años que era indocumentado. Esta es una historia que tiene que ser escuchada. Una historia que te da la oportunidad de ver la vida de un dreamer, un americano. Good evening. My name is Sergio Mejia, and I'm incredibly honored and humbled to call myself a Joe A. Calloway nominee. This nomination is something that was completely unexpected, and I could not be any more happy to be part of a long line of outstanding nominees and recipients of this award. Americano is a story of a dreamer, a story of hope, love, and perseverance, all driven by the American dream, a dream that Tony Valdovinos had when he found out at the age of 18 that he was indeed undocumented. This is a story that has to be heard, a story that gives you a chance to look into the life of a dreamer. I would like to thank writer and director Michael Barnard for giving me this incredible opportunity to be part of a stellar creative team. I would also like to thank writers Jonathan Rosenberg and Fernanda Santos. Thank you to Carrie Rodriguez for an incredible score, Sergio Mendoza for wonderful arrangements. Thank you to my incredible talented right-hand man, Eric Hall. Thank you to producer Jason Rose for trusting in me, the crew at Visceral Entertainment, and of course, an amazingly talented cast. Thank you to Tony Valdivinos for sharing his story and who continues to chase that dream still today. Lastly, I would like to thank mi familia, mi mamá, mi abuelita, Vanessa, Michael, Frank, Elena, and Chumi for their continuous support. Muchas gracias y buenas noches. Congratulations and thank you to all of our Callaway finalists. We on the committee were so excited and inspired by your work. As we all know, we were not able to hold the Callaway Awards last year, and we are so happy and grateful to be back. And now I'll turn it over to Rachel Chavkin, who will honor the winner of the 21-22 Callaway Awards for outstanding direction. What a friggin' joy to get to do this. Sahim, it's very fitting for you. You are so gorgeous and fierce and committed to this craft of directing that we share. Uh, and for those of you who don't know Sahim Ali or his work, I'm gonna give a touch more context about him broadly as both a colleague and a friend, and also speak a little bit about his glorious work on Fat Ham at the Public Theater, which is being honored here, and which is now thrillingly going to be Sahim's Broadway debut when it opens at the American Airlines Theater on March 21st. I know I can't wait to see it again. Um, the production is, Uh, deeply funny, deeply sad, so abundantly colorful. Um, the spirit of life flows off it, even for a work that's about grieving. Um, and I feel confident that this uh, may be Sahim's first Broadway show, and it's not going to be his last. So, okay, Sahim, a few more words. Uh, Sahim is a deeply committed partner to collaborators, to colleagues, and to our field. He is institutionally minded, serving as the Associate Artistic Director at the Public Theater and helping care for the work of so many artists there, both in his institutional capacity, so many folks he's introduced to that theater uh, and brought them into the fold of the canon, and especially through his own profound production work there, such as Fat Ham and so many incredible Shakespeare productions. Sahim finds the classic within the contemporary and equally the contemporary in the classic. And he is also one of the most ferociously committed leaders of this union. I have the great joy of working with him on the executive board and he is sober and balanced and rigorous and deeply creative in this practice, which can be dry. And above all, Sahim never loses sight of the humans and the artists that are shaped by the rights and responsibilities that SDC fights for every day. And lastly, I want to say Sahim is a friend. He's someone I can text at any time <laughs> with any question or in search of insight. Uh, and equally, I go to him for comfort. 
During the pandemic, Sahim never stopped working creatively, and he also found the time with several close colleagues to organize one of the most thoughtful and effective anti-racism working groups fighting for collective liberation in our field. Uh, the conversations were intersectional and complex, and they continue today, and Sahim is still a central heart of that group. And so it is my honor and joy to present him now with the Joe A. Calloway Award for Directing. Sahim. Thank you, Rachel, for that really lovely introduction. Um, uh, you're a dear friend, a dear colleague, and yes, we most likely be texting right after this telecast. Um, and thank you to SDCF for this recognition. Um, I'm really grateful because what makes this award special is that it comes from my peers. Um, this is actually the first award in directing that I have ever received. So, you know, you only get one first and you can imagine how special this is. Um, my peers are the people whose opinions, whose feedback, whose impressions I value the most. So, um, this is, again, what makes it so meaningful. Um, you know, making Fat Ham was an extraordinary experience. Uh, James Imes wrote this beautiful, irreverent, theatrical, kind of contemporary take on that old chestnut Hamlet. And we created a pro production that was moving and um, delightful and uh, joy bringing and life affirming. Um, it's the kind of theater that I'm most attracted to because truly it can only happen in a theater. I can't imagine Fat Ham happening in any other medium. And, um, you know, we're in a really interesting moment right now. This post-pandemic moment is anything but post. We are still in it. And um, I'm such a firm believer that these kinds of plays that push the boundaries of storytelling, of, of shape and form and structure, um, that can only live in the theater. I mean, this is the kind of thing that um, is what I want to engage with and what I make theater. So this award is such a beautiful affirmation of the energy that I put into and the work that I find most meaningful. And for that, I am truly, truly grateful. Thank you to the Callaway Committee for all the work that you do, for all the shows that you see. That is no small feat. Um, and I give my thanks also to my artistic home, to the public theater, to Oscar, my colleague, who invited me and gave me the charge of bringing in work and artists who I felt um, we could support and uh, uplift. And Fat Ham was truly a play that I think would only happen in the public theater. Um, and for that, without that invitation, I wouldn't have been able to create this production. So I'm grateful for that, grateful for the home that I have. And may we all find homes, make homes, artistic homes, um, however temporary, where we can engage in the work that feels really, really meaningful for us. That is my wish for us all. Thank you. Congratulations, Sahim. I can't wait to come see Fat Ham at the American Airlines this spring. I'm Mark Bruni, and it gives me great pleasure to present this year's Callaway Award for Choreography to Josh Prince. Josh Prince, the name rolls off the tongue and insists that it be used in its entirety. Josh Prince. Josh and I have been friends and collaborators since working for the first time on Beautiful. And when Trevor came along, I knew he was just the choreographer for the job. Everything he does comes from story and from the needs of the individual show. And with a cast full of actual teenagers with limited dance training, on Trevor, Josh faced a unique challenge, how to create an elevated movement with style and kineticism while working with enthusiastic, if not entirely trained, performers. From a lab under the umbrella of Josh's amazing and essential nonprofit, Dance Lab New York, to the out-of-town production at Writers Theatre in Glencoe, to Stage 42 Off-Broadway, and thanks to our intrepid producers on Disney+. Plus, Josh never stopped revising and revisiting his work as we crafted the show together. He found a language and vocabulary of movement that became the heartbeat and pulse of the show, and I can't imagine what it would have been like without his invaluable imagination. He's just the mind you want when you get a script with an opening number that goes to 10 locations in three minutes. He's just the one you want when that same script calls for a show-stopping production number from 12-year-old singer movers. And he's just the one you want on the other side of your text message at 6 a.m. answering your harebrained shower idea with an 
I'm not so sure about that emoji. Josh's irrepressible energy is infectious. His work is meticulous, thoughtful, and buoyant. I feel lucky to have gotten to work with Josh on Trevor, and I couldn't be more thrilled that his superb work is being recognized and congratulated in this way. Congratulations, Josh. Wow, thank you so much, Mark, for those incredibly kind words. My gosh, if I didn't know any better, I would think I was at my own eulogy. Uh, a huge thank you to SDCF and the esteemed voting committee for this truly humbling honor. My wish for every choreographer is that their lives are filled with experiences just like I had with Trevor the Musical, that they are championed like I was by passionate producers like Roy Furman, John Ambrosino, Mark Woods, and Josie Bray, that they are entrusted and valued for their contributions to the storytelling like I was by brilliant writers like Dan Collins and Julianne Wick Davis, that they have the privilege of collaborating with and befriending a genius, classy mensch of a director like Mark Bruni, a man with more show posters on his wall than the New York and West End Joe Allens combined, and a director who does what great leaders do, sees the best in you and gets the best from you, and who is not afraid to receive an, I'm not so sure about that emoji at 6 a.m. I wish for you a lifetime of fellow creatives and designers. Shout out to musical director Matt Deichman and my associate Jody Renard, who will walk through the fire that is the making of a new off-Broadway musical with kids during a pandemic, uh, and who will exemplify the term labor of love. I wish for you a lifetime of authentic, hardworking, and joyful casts like we had on Trevor. Thank you, Mary Sugarman, who inspire you to experience the magic of theater the same way you did when you were a kid. And last, but certainly not least, I wish you a lifetime of shows whose stories and messages resonate with you as deeply as Trevor's resonates with me. To receive this honor for a show that is so personal is such a gift, and it is a gift I will cherish always. And any attention that this accolade might draw to this beautiful musical that helps LGBTQ plus youth find acceptance and recognize that their future is bright makes me very proud indeed. Thank you so much. I'm Jim Nicola. And I have been asked to share with you all, in honor of this year's Zelda Fitchandler Award winner, Ron O.J. Parson, and finalist Lillianne Brown, some of Zelda's words from past speeches. I accepted, against my better judgment, having spent many years working with and learning from Zelda, but mostly being dazzled by her. I think it will only be reminding me of my shortcomings. However, because of my love and respect for this pioneering genius of a woman, I simply could not refuse. Much of what she spoke of for these past occasions dealt with the obscure but relevant history of the not-for-profit theater in this country. These remarks serve as metaphors for directors and choreographers who are today carving out a place in the American landscape, particularly away from the drama of New York City. I hope that you, Ron and Lillianne, especially, will be inspired by her words as much as I have always been. So here she blows. In the divine comedy that is our human destiny, all predictions are wrong. That's one of the few certainties granted to us. Though the predictions may be wrong, they're right about the people who voice them. Not about their future, but about the experience of their present moment. We who toil in the vineyards of art owe it to each other not to work from inside our worst predictions, but not to work to despair, or if we despair, to work on anyway, because we simply can't predict what's coming next. The world only turns forward, and anything we can happen, and anything does. If it's necessary to cut back expenditures to meet lowering income, let's do it as creatively as we can, using the situation as an occasion to sharply focus our priorities, even as we continue to battle for the sustenance, both earned and unearned, our work merits. I think the big, big, big piece of information she gave me is in those words about uh, the special sacred duty or calling of the artist to repair the world. Um, and the tragedy 
of American artists is that we live in a culture that doesn't understand that and doesn't value that. Uh, she says somewhere else in the, all those speeches that uh, that also really stuck with me as a, 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 someone who became an artistic director who had never had an experience of doing it, had never played the role before. But what always stuck in my mind was, she said that the artistic director's project or our creative project is the institution that a playwright writes a play, that a director directs a play, and a designer designs a set or costumes or lights. An artistic director creates a meeting place for artists and uh, the community. Hello, I'm Dee Lynn Myers, and it is my absolute pleasure to introduce to you this year's finalist, for the Zelda Fitch Handler Award, and that is Lillianne Brown. When I look at her credits already, when I look at her accomplishments already, I can only imagine the light that she will bring to our industry, as well as integrity. She has written, produced, directed, acted, all those wonderful attributes that any good director, much less a great director, needs to do. Having run her own company, she knows what it's like as she works regionally and back in her beloved Chicago. I think that her integrity, her smart choices, and her deliberate intention to bring stories to life will inspire us for years to come as she continues to enlighten our industry for years to come. It's my great pleasure and my great joy. I can think of no one in this moment more deserving than Lillianne Brown. Thank you so much to the Stage Directors and Choreographers Foundation for everything that you do to support our craft and acknowledge those in our field. Most people don't even know what directors truly do, which is why I'm here in my kitchen, because this is where I do half of my work. To be recognized by my community for what we know is the kitchen work and the work that goes on stage, it's a profound honor. It's a particular honor this year when my colleague Ron O.J. Parson is the recipient. That's the best company I could possibly be in. I give special thanks to the Chicago theater community. It's because of the Chicago theater community that I'm here and continue to keep going. And I'm forever grateful. Thank you very much. Congratulations to you, Lillianne. Along with grandchildren, one of the greatest thrills of getting older is having more time for new experiences. Like seeing streets, theaters, and awards named in honor of the giants with whom you once conversed. And the further joy of presenting one of those awards to a colleague you've known for decades. Presenting the Zelda Fitch Handler Award to Ronald J. Parson is a privilege that comes with age. It was 40 years ago in his hometown of Buffalo, New York, when we first shared our dream of one day being in an August Wilson play. Uh, at the time, we were in a production of A Raisin in the Sun, directed by Hal Scott. I in the smallest speaking role in the show, and Ron as a moving man with no lines. Now he has directed over 30 productions of the Bard of Pittsburgh's canon, nine at Chicago's Tony winning Court Theater, where Ron is a resident director. How fitting that that theater is on the South Side where Ms. Hansberry set her wonderful play. Through the years, I have come to know this proud black artist very well. I learned about the first theater he started at the University of Michigan's professional theater training program. He talked students into being in his productions. People like David Allen Greer and Louise Ciccone, who we now know as Madonna. Currently, Ron conducts workshops with arts and education programs and is the creator of the Spotlight Reading Series at Court Theater, a reading series developed to introduce young and old to the plays of the Black theater movement and beyond. He is a member of Timeline Theater Company, and a co-founder and former artistic director of the Onyx Theater Ensemble of Chicago. 
His Chicago theater credits are too voluminous to mention, but they do include Victory Gardens, Goodman, Steppenwolf, Black Ensemble Theater, Congo Square Theater Company, and Northlight. Regionally, Ron has worked north, south, east, and west. And in Canada, he directed a world premiere at the Stratford Festival in Stratford, Ontario. Ron's productions of Pinter and Beckett solidify his amalgam of the old school and the new school. He is at once historian of black culture and visionary of American culture. The historic reading uh, and the triumphant productions of playwright Tyler Abercrombie's Relentless bear witness to the years of service in the vineyards of America's theaters. His extraordinary service makes him worthy of the 2022 Zelda Fitch Handler Award. Congratulations, dear friend of culture. Wow, <laughs> a life in the theater. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank the SDCF for this recognition. Of course, we never do this for awards, but it's always nice to be recognized for the work that we do in the arts. Yeah, I remember a quote, I think it was George Burns who said, choose a job you love and you'll never work a day in your life. Well, I've had a life in the theater and I thought I was going to be a baseball player and then a sports journalist. All the time I was acting and directing through my teenage years. And I realized when I got to the University of Michigan, okay, maybe I can try this. And then thanks to Stephen McKinley Henderson, I realized what I was supposed to be doing after all these years at the University of Michigan. <laughs> so I'd like to thank all the many influences in my life that led, led my, me to this career path. And I'd like to thank the many, many, many of those people who are in my life and influenced me. Neil Dubrock, founder of the Studio Arena Theater. Mr. Jaffe, my junior high school drama teacher. Robert McKee, who is now a screenwriting guru, who was my first college drama teacher at the University of Michigan. Of course, Court Theater's Charlie Newell, Steve Albert, Angel Isaguri, uh, also from college, my college days, Michael Pinckney, Von Washington, uh, the Joyce Foundation, Ellen Alberding, Angelique Power, Michelle Boone, Tracy Hall, and my friend Ife McWhorter who at one time told me I was too qualified for this job. You need to just do something else. And I said, okay, maybe I'll go back to the theater. William Esper, my Meisner technique guru. Hal Scott, a mentor and director of mine. Paul Carter Harrison, Lou Bellamy, Charles Michael Moore, Martha Levy of Steppenwolf fame, Chuck Smith, Richard Bergwin, Oyamo, playwright. Stephen McKinley Henderson, of course, as I said, and of course, Alfred Wilson and the founding members of the Onyx Theater Ensemble. When I got to Chicago, we started that theater um, and it flourished. We didn't know what was gonna happen. So I'd like to thank all the members of the Onyx Theater Ensemble in our early days. And as I said, the Joyce Foundation, which supported me my entire Chicago career. These are the people who helped make me the artist that I am. And I enjoy just thanking all of them. And of course, paying it forward now to the many young directors who are out there achieving great things, artistic directors, executive directors, Tony nominations, people who have assisted me along my way of 50 years of doing this. And I wanna thank God for all the work that we do as artists. It's not an easy thing, believe me. And to have a life in the theater all my life I've been doing this and I just really want to appreciate this award from the SDCF. Thank you so much. Hi, my name is Annie Kaufman and I'm Vice President of the SDC Foundation and currently serve as the chairperson for the Lloyd Richards New Futures Residency. This incredible residency supports mid-career BIPOC directors and choreographers who are interested in artistic leadership through a year-long residency at a regional theater. Our first year saw two artists, Shay Cage and Elizabeth Carter, in residence at Cornerstone Theater and Oregon Shakespeare Festival, respectively. I really encourage you to keep an eye out for these unique artists who are currently working across the country. 
This year, I am thrilled to be introducing you to our 22-23 Richards resident, Kendra Ware, who is being mentored at this moment by the fabulous Robert Barry Fleming at Actors Theatre of Louisville. The selection committee comprised of myself, Justin Amica, Kent Gash, and Shay Yu, with Scott Richards serving as advisor, was overwhelmed by Kendra's ambitious vision. She's a performance-based multidisciplinary artist who uses live performance, video, and installation to create hybrid stage environments. Her goal is to explore the intersections of race, gender, class, cultural politics, and identity. When she applied, she'd been collaborating with Grammy award-winning artist Martha Gonzalez on a concept album and theatrical concert. And I believe she is still doing that to this day. Our committee and ATL's leadership community jumped at the chance to have someone of Kendra's eclectic experience and unique perspective on making work. It is my great pleasure to introduce this remarkable multi-hyphenate artist, Kendra Ware, who will say a few words about the residency experience so far. Welcome, Kendra. Hello, I am Kendra Ware, and I am delighted and honored to be this year's SDCF Lloyd Richards Director in Residence at Actors Theatre of Louisville. It has been a privilege and honor to work alongside Robert Barry Fleming and bear witness to the work that he and his team have been doing during trying circumstances. They are dreaming big and tenacious over there and they're inspiring my work. I know that receiving this award is and continues to be a life-changing experience, one that I will cherish for the rest of my life. For the first time, I feel acknowledged and further heralded by my community and peers in my industry. And I can tell you, it feels great. It encourages me to dream bigger, more fuller and in living color. And it encourages me to, to steward mentorship as well. My goal as an artist is to advance visibility and representation and power sharing between artists and institutions, communities and organizations to build strong partnerships and intersectional approaches. So working with Actors Theater of Louisville, whose mission closely aligns with my own was a boon and continues to be a community in which I'm proud to be a part of. I'm so thankful for SDCF and Danny, her team and the committee and to all, I am so grateful. Thank you. Hello, I'm Rachel Davidson, Gordon Davidson's daughter. My father treasured this community and he fiercely sought out, nurtured and protected theater artists. The power of theater, theater people, theater makers and theater goers truly was my dad's elixir. He saw everything in terms of the theater arts and he expressed his fears, worries and concerns and celebrated his joys, thrills and triumphs on stage. He wanted to hear from everyone and initiated inclusive programming commissioned plays, welcome diverse voices, integrated music and dance, and encourage controversy and conversation. I've loved being included in the award committee's conversation and exploration, hearing your reasons for how and why you choose to honor your peers and to assure that the work in live theater remains supported and vital. Thank you for including me in participating in this process. And thank you for acknowledging my dad's memory in the very best possible way by recognizing the work of you, his phenomenal colleagues, you further solidify his memory. My mother worries every day that dad's legacy will be forgotten, knowing that this foundation is purposely giving his namesake award to someone who embodies his artistic spirit, his drive, his inclusivity, his absolute need to run up onto that stage and welcome everyone in to share stories untold before or retold in a new light is so meaningful. Congratulations to Donald Byrd, the first choreographer to receive this award. And thank you, SDCF, for continuing to honor our Gordon. Thank you, Rachel. It's been wonderful to have your memories and perspectives join the committee's work this season. It's always a great privilege to serve on the Davidson Award Committee, and especially 
to be in joyful community with my fellow committee members. I'd like to thank them now. Sheldon Epps, Lisa Peterson, Sorette Scott, Michael John Garces, Tom Moore, Warner Shook, and Laura Penn. The committee is also always grateful to Danielle Barlow and the staff of the foundation for their tireless support. We've all found that coming together to reflect on Gordon's passionate belief in the importance and potential of theater is very good for the soul. Right now, the theater that was the center of Gordon's work for over four decades, the Mark Taper Forum, is in rehearsals for the 30th anniversary production of Anna DeVere Smith's remarkable play, Twilight, Los Angeles, 1992. The play, which chronicles the lives and spirits of LA in the aftermath of the 1992 uprisings, was a project Gordon believed was necessary. It was a huge undertaking, and he marshaled all the resources and connections of the theater to support and develop the play. Twilight and the process which created it remain testaments of Gordon's ideals about the purpose of theater, the responsibilities of artists, and the importance of including everyone in the work. Working on the play again has reminded everyone at Center Theater Group of Gordon's inextricably linked artistic and social commitments. His spirit and legacy have been very present in CTG's halls and rehearsal rooms over these last months. It's always invigorating to be back in contact with him. Each year, the Davidson Committee recognizes a director or choreographer who shares Gordon's commitments and passions and whose body of work has had profound impacts on the communities where they live. The committee is honored to uplift artists whose life, life work reawakens in all of us the deeply held beliefs about our art form that Gordon held so dear. It's now my pleasure to turn things over to my friend Braden Abraham, who will introduce this year's awardee. Hello, everyone. It's great to be here with you uh, in this virtual space honoring Donald Byrd. A couple summers ago, I was in my living room watching theater online, and I was watching Spectrum Dance Theater's Race and Climate Change Festival when something happened, and I had this giddy sensation of being transported inside Donald Byrd's head. We have a sense that we're in good hands watching a performance when the director gets the entrances and exits right. And you entered this festival on your laptop through this portal of rotating nodes connected and suspended in a black void like tiny galaxies or the synapses firing in Donald's brain. The Race and Climate Change Festival was a sort of choose your own adventure virtual dreamscape. You clicked on each node and it opened a a filmed dance in a dark hotel room, a uh, futuristic ritual outdoors, a conversational inquiry on Zoom. It was this eclectic mix of riffs and form and content, connecting ideas and emotions around race and climate and art that were animated Donald and his company. I find Donald singular in his restless experimentation. He's unique in how he combines theater and dance narrative and environment, physical rigor and emotional impact, individual voice and community consciousness. Seattle, in spite of the familiar challenges that the arts and culture, culture sector has faced, is still a wondrous place that retains its frontier spirit and draws pioneering artists like Donald, who, who like the edges, who operate confidently in the liminal spaces and refuse to be pinned down. We're here today clearly because Donald belongs in the company of other pioneers. I didn't have the honor of knowing Gordon Davidson, but like Zelda Fitchandler, Hallie Flanagan, and so many other pioneers of the American theater, I'm the beneficiary of his vision and commitment to making work outside of the commercial spotlight, a commitment to making theater in a community for that community with the artists who live there. In Seattle, I benefited from knowing Donald and feeling the impact of his work. He created two pieces with Spectrum that performed at Seattle Rep during my tenure as artistic director, Shot and Rap on Race. Both pieces were made in the wake of Michael Brown's murder and other tragic events, igniting this latest chapter of racial reckoning in America. But where do these chapters begin and end? Donald asked this question in these two works, and he opened a continuum of history of investigation of physical brutality and psychological terror, and also 
through movement and text, a boundless capacity for beauty, clarity, compassion, and change. A Lifetime Achievement Award offers a valuable look backward at the accumulation of work, the threads and the through lines of a singular artist. You can look at this extensive biography of Donald and see the many lives that he's lived, his influences and those he's influenced in collaborations and disciplines. Birth, death, rebirth, these are the cycles we keep experiencing as artists if we're lucky and aware and retain that capacity to keep opening up to what the world offers us in each passing moment. In the short time that I've gotten to know Donald and the longer time I've had the privilege of experiencing and being affected by his work has given me more courage as an artist, made me think not about what's already been done, but inspired me to think and act on what's possible. I'm proud and incredibly honored to present the Gordon Davidson Award for Lifetime Achievement to Donald Byrd. Thank you, Braden, my friend, for your kind and generous words. Thank you, the SDC Foundation and the Selection Committee for this amazing honor. I am moved, thrilled, humbled, delighted, grateful, and all kinds of whelmed to be selected as the recipient of the 2022 SDC Foundation's Gordon Davison Award. It has been a long haul, and I plan to keep hauling. When I heard I had been selected to be the recipient of the Gordon Davidson Award, I was flooded with feelings, thoughts, and questions. What, 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 I say to myself. This is an honor, this is an award named to honor one of the most important figures of the 20th century American theater, a towering and legendary figure in the resident theater movement. And I am to receive this award? What, me, in the same breath as Gordon Davison? <laughs> because in many ways, I still feel as I did 50 years ago, at the beginning, when I decided that this was the life, the life in the theater I wanted. That there are those who came before me, like Davison, that I am in awe of and that I am reaching after wanting to contribute to and serve the dance and the theater. And it hits me that I'm the first choreographer, hopefully many more to follow, to receive this award. I'm still picking myself up off the metaphoric floor. This moment brings up much. I am flooded with memories of my time in college at Tufts the drama department there, the Tufts Arena Theater, dreaming of making a life for myself in the theater, seeing the Alvin Ely American Dance Theater for the first time in the winter of 1970, weeping, cheering, applauding wildly with a theater full of people and quietly saying to myself, anything that can have this effect on people, that's what I want to do. Being let go from the Twyla Tharp Company, and rightly so, and because of that, asking myself the very crucial question at 23, do I have something to offer to contribute? Several years later, living in Venice Beach, California, and almost daily having coffee with my friend John Childers and having the one day I'm gonna conversation, living in the optimism of possibility, Deciding to teach daily classes as a way to practice communicating my movement ideas to others. Starting my first dance company a few years later and the thrill of doing our first performance, a single night at the Coronet Theater on La Cienega Boulevard in Los Angeles. Starting to be compelled to make work that creates awareness and raises questions around race and racism in America creating the first iteration of the minstrel show and wondering at how certain theatrical traditions have further compounded and perpetuated racism in America. 
the emergence of my notion of dance theater, a dramaturgy where dance, movement, text, images, disruption, discomfort, ill at easeness, virtuosity converge, where difficult, complicated, and often intractable issues are the subject, where audiences are simultaneously entertained, thrilled, confronted, and alienated, asked to make choices about what to look at, to be okay with the stage being a democratized space where they can't see it all or know it all, wanting audiences to not be passive in how they engage with theatrical experiences, where they cast themselves as the Johns and dancers and actors or sex workers there to satisfy them as they sit back with their legs spread waiting for completion. In my world, the audience and the players, dancers, are in a complex, dynamic relationship of discovery and deep engagement. My theater is not a place of safety and comfort, but rather it is a dangerous place, full of risk, not physical, but emotional, intellectual, a place where you are or, or who you are or consider yourself to be might be confronted where you bump into yourself, your beliefs, your values, and your assumptions. It is a place where physicality and communication through the body is held in the highest esteem. When I arrived in Seattle 20 years ago, wanting to contribute and elevate dance in my new community, my new home, especially dance from a black perspective, and dance is not only as an art form, but also its possibilities as a social civic instrument. Wanting to create a dance company of the highest order with dancers with imposing technique, smart, imaginative, fearless, a curious intellect, and a collaborative spirit. I didn't know what would happen, if I would even stay. What has emerged is a platform, or perhaps a vessel, that has the capacity to contain all my ideas, thoughts, dreams, explorations into a meaningful and relevant dance theater. Spectrum Dance Theater became that place. Aren't I lucky to have landed here? In 1988, sitting in a rehearsal studio in the Minskoff Building on Broadway with Alvin Ailey, where I am making a new ballet that he has invited me to create for his company. Until this point, when people would ask me what I did, I would usually say something like along the lines of, I, I'm working to be a choreographer or I want to be a choreographer. Alvin is sitting next to me, watching intently as the dancers move. I am very much aware of him watching and his presence. He leans in towards me and says softly, with his deep voice and unique way of speaking, you do such marvelous things. It was in that moment I realized I was no longer trying to be a choreographer. I was a choreographer, if for no other reason than Alvin Ailey told me so. Perhaps this moment is like that one, and that you, the SDC Foundation, the Davidson Selection Committee, have told me that yes, what you do matters. You have indeed made a con contribution, and yes, you do do such marvelous things. Thank you. Hello again. What an inspiring evening. I'm reminded of Gordon Davidson's words. The great thing about theater is that it's dealing with the art of the possible. What's possible is not limited by money, but by imagination and vision. I hope tonight can serve as inspiration for our imagination, vision, and growth as a community and in the American theater. And thank you again for joining us to celebrate the incredible accomplishments of our extraordinary members, finalists, and winners. Good night, everyone.